terrorists and crime, strife and danger And everybody seem a little bit stranger I can't seem to find my right away I say it's getting harder every day and every way It's hard to explain how I feel But I know the feeling is real And when they put my ship set sail I'll be on the shore Dancing with the ocean like I never did before And watch it as it come and go Cause I know that someone knows this is the life for me And when they put my ship set sail I'll be on the beach Watching through the water with the same beneath my feet So I can watch another sunrise You know I can't deny this is the life for me The life for me Absolutely. I mean, you say brotherhood. I mean, you're talking about friends who got your back, friends, you know, who do anything for you and you for them. If you're in a time of need, you know, when you're, when you're sick in the hospital, when you're in debt, when you're in trouble, who are you going to look to for help? For me, it's my prep friends. And they've always been there for me and I for them. And like I say, it's been over 40 years now and we're still tight. I would say I see a number of them every week beyond just the guys that are sitting here right here next to me and the other prep alumni that are in the building. Um, I can count on a hand and a half of the guys that I see every week that I went to prep with. That the connection is still strong. Um, I'm going out to Seattle in April to visit a prep buddy, who, uh, Michael Smith. Oh, no way. Yeah. What's he doing out there? Uh, he is working in computer nerdery. <laughs> and uh, so we're uh, we're gonna go take a trip out there and spend a few days with him and uh, the baby. And oh, he's got a baby. He's got a baby. Young Holden Gray, yeah. handsome, handsomest kid in town. Yeah. I got involved in a lot of things, and that I think is the key. You know, I got involved in clubs. I would go to the games, you know, get in the bomb squad, um, and I think those experiences, you know, going to clubs and, and pursuing things with people who had, who had similar interests to me, going to the bomb squad and just, you know, being a part of, of that, that frenzy during, uh, during these great moments that, you know, we can experience with prep sports, that, to me, really solidified those bonds with other students and, uh, you know, created that sense of brotherhood that you know, I've, I've taken with me forever. Uh, you know, I'm still, uh, I'm still good friends with uh, some real good friends I made during that period of time. I remember some of the, some of the uh, pep rallies as being some pretty wild times. Um, the times have changed. Our rival back then, especially in football, was St. Joe's. Uh, and every year we, you know, we'd have the St. The St. Joe's game, and there'd be a prep rally. And I remember, I think it was my senior year, playing St. Joe's. Guys had gone to a miniature golf course and, and uh, sawed off a, a pig, like an artificial pig, a, a fiberglass pig. From a, and uh, St. Joe's mascot, there, you know, our our name for them was the Hogs. We had this pep rally before the game where they ripped, you know, the crowd, the student body ripped this fiberglass pig to pieces, smashed it with hammers, and then threw bacon all over the quad. <laughs> I remember that day. It was a little, a little odd. Yeah, there was yeah, definitely that day, and you know, we we definitely had some great prep, pep rallies out in the uh, 
out in the quad and the student body out there just, just basically, you know, raising hell and, and uh, you know, again, you know, you know, really, really good, genuine fun during the school day. Um, yeah, and, you know, nothing, nothing really too crazy. Uh, the one event that I can think of for my senior year does revolve around our rivalry with St. Joe's, but I don't care to share the rest of that story. I somehow got abandoned and then uh, had to run like two miles through the woods in order to get back home, but that was a uh, story for another day. We had a we had a very interesting year. Um, my my senior class uh, in hockey. We were going to be the first. We I graduated in two thousand, and we were going to be the first class since I believe nineteen ninety or so. First class in ten or more years that. To walk through prep to spend four years at Fairfield Prep. Actually, it would have had to be like eight years or something. It had to have been closer to 20 years. Um, we we didn't win a state championship my freshman, sophomore, junior year. And we were going to be the first class in, in that long, in 20 or so years, to, to not get a state championship. And, um, and we finished our season 8-11. Because we play such a competitive schedule, many of those losses were actually out-of-state losses. So back then, those losses didn't count towards our record. Uh, so we became the 13th seed in the state tournament with an 8-11 and one record, and uh, we beat Greenwich, the number seven seed in the finals, uh, went to win the state championship. And uh, the brotherhood that 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 created, the, the feeling of, of togetherness that that created. Um, is it's unique uh, because we had we had something that we had to overcome. Uh, we had something that we, we weren't going to let, no matter whether we were the most talented team, which we weren't. No matter whether we were the uh, you know we were we were not the best team, uh, best group of hockey players. We we definitely were the best team, and that brought us together. the ensemble. You don't do anything on your own. Even if you are performing a solo, there is a pianist accompanying you. Or if you have a monologue in a play, the set that surrounds you has to fit with the monologue that you're presenting. You cannot do these arts without a sense of brotherhood. My, my boys clean the room together. And they, stack, they stack the chairs together and they, they put stuff away together. That's the brotherhood in music. <laughs> well, I think a lot of them are doing music and theater in middle school. So when they come to prep, it's a common experience. It's not like, you know, when you play piano in middle school, well, the piano is still the piano when you come to Fairfield Prep. So it's not like taking on a totally new subject. Struggling with Latin for the first time. Sure. Beverly Hills Lado to what else? Beverly Hills Lado to what else? It was totally like Beverly Hills Lado to what else? My favorite. Beverly Hills Lado to what else? I remember. I remember watching Lado to what else. The original. Dylan, my favorite character, he was so cute. I can't believe he and Brenda broke up. I was so upset when they broke up, but that was my favorite show. Luke Perry was like the hottest thing on earth, and um, it was a story about uh, high school aged students, which I was around the same time anyway, so it was sort of my age range that was tapping into. Um, it was taking place in Beverly Hills, which seemed completely on the other side of the world, even though it's the other side of the United States. 
um, the California was something for me that just seemed glamorous and beautiful and amazing. So these students had a total alternative lifestyle that I never had. They had opportunities I never had, they drove cars I never had. It was just sort of like a dream fantasy world. And they had such amazing drama and such great love connections and stuff that I wasn't experiencing in my life. When I was in high school, people were listening to the Beach Boys. Uh, that was pretty hot, uh, especially the slow songs, uh, you know, dancing with your girlfriend at the party and so on. Yeah. I think Matthews was big, you know, that was a big concert to go to. Yeah. So we didn't call him Dave, we called him DMD. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely Madonna. Madonna and Prince. I loved um, Police and uh, my senior year U2. I loved U2. OAR and Dispatch and Dave were big. I was sort of over Dave and like eight. Sort of yeah. For me. Um, Cause it, you we were in college and that's all we were in the second yeah. of the top. Stuff like that, so it was just too much. We all Dispatch. Um, well, my sophomore in high school, I uh, learned both. I, I, I can't remember the number. There's a, there's a concert in Boston. Um, it seemed like every kid there was a busy high kid. Um, the dispatch was a big one. Uh, the Grateful Dead, the Allman Brothers, the Marshall Tucker Band, uh, that was music that I liked. Uh, you know, uh, the Beatles had ended, the Rolling Stones were big, the Beach Boys were still big. So those were probably the real top bands. Absolutely not. Uh, not even close. <laughs> That's the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> well, if you ask Mr. D, he'll tell you that I was the absolute man. I don't necessarily agree with that. And just in case there was any question as to whether I was a nerd in high school, I think that this picture kind of sums up me in high school. But if you look at this, this is an 18th birthday for my friend Laura and my friend Sip. And this is their birthday party. And if you see beers on the table, which you do, that's because in the olden days, when you turned 18, you were allowed to not only vote, not only go to the military, but you could actually drink a beer. So, we had beer at the party. But if you look closely, not only will you notice that everybody has a beer, except for me, I have a tab, which kind of was the drink in the 1970s that was like Diet Coke, but they called it the tab. I'm drinking a tab, but the best part is, in my hands, in an, at an 18th birthday party, I'm doing a Rubik's Cube. I don't, I don't know, my high school wasn't a big high school, wasn't small as I remember there being like a cool group for a cool kid. Especially by senior year, we all just knew each other so well that we all kind of hung out together. So we're sitting around drinking beers at an 18th birthday party, and I'm drinking diet soda and solving a Rubik's Cube. So there you go. I was fated to be your computer technology teacher. Listen, this is just Rose. My coolness in high school. Um, I, I don't think I was like the man. Um, those guys were the, you know, the big jocks. And they had the parties and you know, all that stuff. But I was not a cool guy. Although I did wind up dating a cheerleader who was one of the cool kids. Good old Melody Koch. Uh, she was not only a cheerleader. She was like in the top five of the school. She was uh, student council president. And I started hanging around with her, 
and uh, that brought me into a um, in, into contact with a lot of uh, uh, of the, uh, the leaders of the school. I'd say I was the quiet kid. Um, yeah, not so much anymore. But uh, when I was in high school, I was I was pretty quiet. Um, didn't really get in trouble. Did my work. Wasn't necessarily an overachiever. Um, was a bit lazy, but was just kind of pretty normal, pretty middle of the road. I was a pack. I was a part of a pack of eight girls. So we were kind of a the somewhat cool girls. We were the in between girls. Yeah, I'd have to say so. Uh, I probably didn't realize it at the time, though. Would have helped me with girls. My generation would have been Raquel Welch. I would say maybe um, Bo Derek. Probably Shannon Darney, I guess. Jenny McCarthy was a mess. Um, I think she still is. Believe it or not, Jane Fonda was like the hottest thing. You know, Marilyn Monroe or Elizabeth Taylor. I think she was married four or five times. Bridget Bardot was even, you know, more, say, when I was growing up. Uh, because she wore very little in some of her films. It was Tiffany Amber Thiessen. She played Kelly Kapowski on Save by the Bell. Um, volleyball, gymnastics. I was a cheerleader. I don't want to admit to that now, but I was. I was a cheerleader all through high school. Um, I was in the pep club, which we just we made signs for games and tried to, you know, or for pep rallies to kind of advertise what was going on at the school. I, I played football all four years and was captain my senior year. I was on the track team all four years. I threw the shot foot and the discus. Wait, you were in the pep club? Yeah. Signs for games, pep rallies. Well, I was in high school. I played um, softball in my town for the town league, my freshman and sophomore year. Um, but I didn't play for school. Um, it was this, my school was about 25, 30 minutes away from my house, and I didn't always have a ride, so I had to take the bus. So it was hard for me to get involved with any sports after school because of the timing. Of the African American Cultural Club. In my high school, we had a huge um, West Indian population. So I was a part of the West Indian Social Club. And believe it or not, I was a part of the drama club. I did volleyball, indoor track, tennis. I was the, be the basketball manager for a year. And I did FBLA, Future Business, Future Business Leaders of America. Um, but I sang in the choir for all four years. And I did the plays my junior and senior year, which was my favorite thing. I was actually, believe it or not, in the Student Library Association, <laughs> Student Library Club. Go figure now, it makes sense, right? I had a Volkswagen Jetta. My uncle gave me his uh, 1990 Volvo, uh, great Volvo. My mom lent me her car, she had a Bronco too. Yeah, I think I had three, two other sisters uh, in high school with me at the same time, and we all shared the same car, and it was an old Chevy, probably uh, a 56 Chevy, um, that would break down all the time. I was... Um... 16 and it was the year I got my license and I was driving around at night with my friends, we were going out um, and I got pulled over by what we thought were cops because they had the lights flashing and you know they had badges and so we were really really scared um, and so they pulled us over and they were asking us to get out of the car and my friends were refusing to get out of the car and I was basically telling them that they should because I was naive. Um, but basically lo and behold we found out after they let us go that they weren't actually cops. I had to go and have a picture taken. I was a New York Daily News all-star, and I had to go meet someone up at the truck stop from New York who was gonna come and take my picture for the Daily News. It was a real nice honor. Uh, before I headed out, I was jumped by three of my teammates. 
Now, it doesn't look it, but my hair used to be very long and bushy. I had it all combed down. Of course, they abused me and they messed up all my hair. And so there's a picture of me in the Daily News with a pile of hair that goes like this and off to the side. It looks like I had a beehive knocked off my head. It was a terrible picture, and of course it was in you know thousands of newspapers, and my mother still has it in her scrapbook. So when I saw that, it was pretty embarrassing. After using the ladies' room in high school, uh, we had Letterman sweaters, which had really big pockets in the side. And after I flushed the toilet, I turned around real quick, and my TI-81 calculator jumped into the toilet right before I had to take um, a physics physics or calculus. So I immediately put my hand in, holding a wet calculator. It's like as if you dropped your cell phone in there, and you'd be like, <gasps> what do you do? And it was clean water. But it was disgusting. So I, I dove in to the toilet after the calculator, and I went, I grabbed paper, and I washed my hands, and I grabbed paper towels, and I came back with my dripping wet calculator to my teacher in total tears in front of the whole class, and they were like, what is her problem? We're getting our bathing suits. We're getting our bathing Where's the bitch? I am so hot. Um. I. I think we were speechless. <laughs> when we saw it, I've never seen Jersey Shore, but my first thought was boys, stay away. <laughs> stay away from girls like that. Very sad. She needs to be in rehab, I guess. Right? There's a train wreck. You just can't walk away and not watch it. I think that's a perfect example of what to avoid in your own life. I mean, I understand she's making money and she's getting attention, but it's at what cost? I mean, I don't know. I don't want to sound like a funny duck, but you gotta, you gotta kind of preserve some of your self-respect. And I don't. Why would I think of Snooky? I think she's an actress paid to be a fool. I would say before the senior year comes around, before you walk down the aisle, make sure you've had a conversation with at least everybody in your class at least one time. That would be a good way to get to say, you know what, I know my class pretty well, and you never know where you're going to cross these guys again later in life. You'd be surprised where they show up in your life. Have fun. I've loved high school. I have so many fond memories. I'm still best friends with some of my friends from high school. Um. I think bathing is often underrated. I'd say work hard so that your academics are not a problem. That's number one. Because if they are, I don't think anything really is going to make you really feel good. Um, bathing regularly. Uh, bathing often. Get involved as much as you can. Make this, this is your school, so make it worthwhile. Go to games, go to plays, go to concerts. Um, you know, support your classmates. Get to know one another. I'm not going to be talking to the guys sitting next to me, but I guarantee that the majority of the guys 